So, Matthew, why did you want to start a record label? Well, when I was a kid, I, I always thought it would be fun to kind of own stuff. A friend of mine and I decided that it would be fun to start a nightclub and because another friend of mine at school had a daddy who owned one and it looked like rock and roll and it looked really, really exciting. Um, and then as I kind of got older and a bit more sensible um, and realised I was a classical musician, um, it became clear that starting a, a classical record label would actually be something that could be quite exciting because I had, you know, more and more friends who, who were great musicians and who had projects that meant a huge amount to them and um, it seemed that there was a space for making these projects happen. And what about the name Orchid? Did you spend a long time trying to come up with names? We did actually. Well it was my brother-in-law and I that, that started the whole thing and we spent a, quite a few happy hours coming up with ridiculous names and then my sister just shouted out in the kitchen, what about Orchid? <laughs> <laughs> and we thought, ooh, sounds quite nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it was really, it always has been something that we did, you know, at home as a family. You know, because everybody that records with us invests so much of themselves into their project that it feels uh, only right that you should, that you kind of become quite close to them during the process. And um, it's, uh, everybody we work with now is part of our family. Did you have any particular models when you were setting up the label? I'm thinking of labels such as ECM or BIS, for example. Um, actually, in the very beginning, no, not at all. Since, I've become much more aware of these labels and the kind of cult following that they have. But uh, at the beginning, it was really just me um, wanting to do my own thing. So many of the releases have got a, a real sense of identity, not themes so much, but a, a real sense of being curated. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the word curated. That's exactly how I, how I hope that people see it. It would be really easy to just take everything, but um, we, we have to be really careful to only get involved in projects that we love. It's kind of that simple. Um, a very early album we did was the London Concord Ensemble, and they did a programme called... St. Petersburg, which was all music uh, related to St. Petersburg, and, and it it just kind of summed up what we were trying to do. They they spent so long working on this program, putting this program together, and, and the cover was beautiful and, and took ages to get right, and and the reviews were fantastic and really picked up on on the fact that you know a lot had gone into making this album, and it really made me think at the time that's exactly what we what we should be doing. We tried to kind of keep that with every album we've done. Um, another album that I've been particularly proud to have on the label was uh, an accordion album by Bjarke Mogensen, who's a fantastic Danish accordionist. And I had, I had no idea who he was when I was introduced to him, although he's you know, becoming extremely successful. Um, and I didn't know anything about the accordion, but I, I loved what he did. I, I loved his arrangements and his style of playing and, and who he was. It was just exactly what I wanted on the label. And, and I've really enjoyed our relationship with, with him. And so it's difficult to pick favourites because everything we do is kind of a favourite. Um, but there are a couple that I have really enjoyed. And another kind of fun example is of what we tried to do um, in giving artists a chance to, to be free uh, was with the pianist Ashley Watts who had a, an album on forte piano which is, uh, was a major sort of departure for Ashley and um, he came with this album and said he wanted to, to give it a big release and I thought well that's exactly what we should do you know it's going to, it's going to upset some people it's going to excite some people um, and that's exactly what we should do so we did it and I'm very proud of it
another project that we're really proud of because we put it together from scratch and, and all elements of it from photography to recording the production and everything was uh, James Gilchrist's Schubert Cycle which was a three album project that was really important to him and, and uh, we were sort of ex extremely happy to be able to facilitate that, put the whole thing together and release it and again it got absolutely fantastic press and um, it was a really worthwhile thing so that we're very proud of that one. Rauschendes Bächlein, so silbern und hell Eilst zur Geliebten, so munter und schnell Ach, trautes Bächlein, mein Bote sei du Bringe die Grüße des Fernen ihr zu Is there a sense that as a performer you really understand other performers' needs and so you can fill in the gaps? Um, I like to think so. Uh, I mean, we, we sit round, me and my friends, sit round talking about these things um, a lot. And, you know, it's funny, the things that come up most often are things like being unhappy with the covers of your records and being unhappy with being forced to record in particular studios and on particular pianos. And um, it usually comes down to... A kind of a, an element of wanting to control what you're putting so much love and energy into and not having it taken away from you uh, at the most important points. Is it possible to define the label's identity? Uh, where is it now? Where will you take it? I think if I had to define the label's identity, I would really like to think of it as a, a room in a museum, you know, a, a modern museum, a contemporary museum with you know, uh, a wall filled with beautiful projects which masses of love had gone into and real personality and um, kind of the most innovative approach possible to giving artists freedom over their projects and then bringing them out into the world as widely as you possibly can. Um, another thing that I think really sums up my dreams for the label to make multi-dimensional projects is um, this album called Fairy Tales, which I put together, which is coming out this year, which is for charity and uh, it's it's children's poems together with music. And so we had uh, we've got actors Clive Owen and Simon Pegg and Kenneth Branagh and Tom Conti. It's an amazing group of actors to read the most wonderful children's poems, um, and we put them together with music. And uh, that's the kind of album that, again, really it says um, what. I think this label should be saying. It's no good having the CDs, the great music, the beautiful artwork all lying around on the shelf. How does the PR work? I feel that we can, we can offer artists really as little or as much as they want um, as far as, for instance, promoting their projects. You know, if they want films made, we can make them. If they want websites built, if they want photos taken... Uh, if they want uh, concerts promoted, we can we can really do everything for them. And and I know personally as a musician that it's it's very comforting to know that um, if I have a project that I've spent that much time working on, that I am able to choose from these uh, these services to to promote the thing, which is obviously so important. From your one man dream, how has the team grown? Um, well. That also has been really important since the beginning that it actually became a, a proper uh, organised business and um, as one of my musician friends said to me after I'd explained the label to him, he said, are there any grown-ups involved? Uh, which was a, a very sensible question and and the answer luckily is yes and I, and I think that that's it's actually something that's quite nice about our company that we are run by a very successful music manager and a record executive and a technical engineer and myself so all of our decisions are covered by all these different angles so we kind of know when we're discussing anything from contracts uh, to you know to organizing particular projects uh, you know artists will be thought about as will the the business side of things and I think that's that's been very very important that I can have fun looking for projects and artists um, whilst the business is run really, really well because um, that's obviously crucial. 
Well, talking to you, Matthew, it seems that the future of Orchid is nothing but rosy. I hope so. Yeah, we, we have fun, a tremendous amount of fun doing it. Everyone involved really enjoys themselves, and uh, I think that's important. And the artists seem to enjoy the process. Um, and as I say, it seems to work really well. We, we have plenty to be doing. We have masses of projects. Um, so absolutely, I'm, I'm really excited about the future.